Hello ladies and gentlemen, congratulations on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you about depression, or what it is classified as major depressive disorder in the American classification. This means that there are other states of depression that are not major depressive disorder and from which major depressive disorder is segregated. In major depressive disorder, we have a severe state of mood disorder in the direction of depression, which lasts at least two weeks or more, and is characterized by a certain number of symptoms and signs, mainly depressed mood, psychomotor retardation, lack of energy, lack of pleasure, and several other symptoms which we'll describe soon, and is not preceded or followed by a manic attack. This is to differentiate it from bipolar major affective, dis uh, bipolar affective disorders, which are characterized by alteration or mood swings between depression and mania. Major depression is just depression. It can be one attack, but it can also be recurrent. A single major depressive unipolar attack or several attacks following each other. The main features, clinical features, as we implied, include the depression of mood or sadness of mood and also lack of pleasure or anhedonia, inability to enjoy the everyday activities, um, slowness in thought, slow, there is slowing in the thought process, and slowness in motor activity. There is no energy and no ability to do what normally used to be done. There are feelings of guilt and may reach up to the point of delusions of guilt, where the person believes that he is responsible for the ill effects that have resulted on account of an action or thought that he has taken. So there are feelings of guilt and delusions of guilt, repentance, always blaming himself, accusing himself, seeing that others blame him or accuse him, and again this may reach a delusional or a hallucinatory degree in which he believes that the others are actually accusing him and talking about him. He may even hear their voices that they are talking about him or talking to him, blaming him for ill effects of his thoughts and actions on others. There are vegetative symptoms such as sleep disorder, usually in typical depressions, it is an early morning insomnia. In the early hours of the morning, the patient wakes up, but it may be also an onset insomnia, that is, at the onset of sleep, he is unable to go to sleep. Or it may be hypersomnia, he may be sleeping excessively, spending much time in bed, with or without sleeping, but he may be sleeping excessively. There are disturbances in appetite usually loss of appetite or lack of appetite associated with the loss of weight. But 
Occasionally, we may have increase in appetite, in which the patient tends to overeat to compensate for his depression by getting it out on the food, so to speak. There is somatic symptoms and vague, of a vague nature, which he is unable to explain, such as stomach pains or intestinal pains, abdominal pains, that is, a headache, a chest pain, anxiety may be accompanying the depression. So these are some of the main symptoms that occur in depression. Now the cause of depression, there are theories that there is a genetic factor. This genetic factor is most obvious in the case of bipolar depressions and is less obvious in the case of major depressive disorder in which there are genetic factors but again not as clear-cut as in bipolar. There are biological factors such as disturbances in dopamine and serotonin deficiency in, in these two substances, neurotransmitters in the brain. There are endocrine factors such as disturbance in the thyroid, diminished thyroxine, or disturbance in the adrenocorticosteroids or other hormones, melatonin and others. Uh, then there are psychosocial factors in which deprivation from an early parent figure occurs in early childhood and this leaves its imprint on the individual in which he experiences having lost a beloved person and he cannot make up for that person. Then there are psychological factors in which uh, Freud made a resemblance between melancholia or depression and mourning or grief. That is a loss of a loved person and the feeling that one's narcissism or self-esteem has gone down because of this loss. Now for the treatment of depression and the prognosis, if it is well treated, the prognosis is good. But if it is not, it may recur or may leave some residual symptoms. Generally, it does not leave residual symptoms, and this is what made Kreplin distinguish between depression and schizophrenia, in that in schizophrenia there are residual symptoms or dementia, whereas in depression there is complete remission. Now with treatment, the prognosis is much better. Now with regards to fasting in Ramadan, there is no problem because the depressed patient has no appetite to begin with, so if you stop him from eating, you are only doing what he likes to do. So there is no discipline involved, but he tends to go along with the fasting measures. Thank you very much.